Welcome back to the Holistic Health Bites podcast, where we discuss all things metabolic health. I'm Andrea, your host and board certified holistic nutritionist here to guide you on the journey to optimal wellness. Today, we are exploring the essential health metrics to provide insights into your current metabolic health and overall wellness. By understanding these numbers, you can take control of your health proactively and make informed decisions for a healthier life. Let's dive in. Number one, triglycerides. Triglycerides are a type of fat that's found in your blood, and they are a crucial indicator of how well your body is processing sugar and fat. Ideally, your fasting triglycerides should fall between 50 and 100 milligrams per deciliter in US values. Factors that drive up the production of triglycerides in a fasted state are too many carbohydrates, especially refined and simple sugars, as well as consumption of unhealthy fats from refined and ultra processed foods and having other conditions like insulin resistance or diabetes. High levels are concerning because they increase the risk of heart disease, lowering refined sugar intake and incorporating more healthy fats along with regular exercise can help keep your triglycerides within the optimal range. You will look for this on your standard lipid panel, but you do want to make sure that your test is done in a fasted state and that you have fasted for 12 to 14 hours during the test. If you test when you're not in a fasted state, your results will be mostly based on your most recent meal not what your body is actively producing and transporting for storage. One other side note, triglycerides often increase during active weight loss. So don't panic if you see elevations while you're on a weight loss journey. This will drop again when your weight stabilizes. The increase is due to more mobilization of fat to be burned for energy. Number two, HDL cholesterol, often mistakenly referred to as the good cholesterol. Let's take a brief moment to explain why this is a mistaken concept. Number one, there's really only one cholesterol. There is no good and bad cholesterol. Number two, HDL isn't even cholesterol, but it's the carrier of the cholesterol, as well as the carrier for fat soluble vitamins, triglycerides, and other fat soluble nutrients. And number three, it's considered good because it's taking cholesterol and fat from your tissues and carrying it back to the liver to be broken down and eliminated or recycled. So really, this is just the second part of the transport of lipids. LDL carries it from the liver to the tissues. HDL carries it back from the tissues back to the liver. Both have benefits. Having more HDL means you can clear out excess cholesterol and lipids more efficiently, which is why higher levels tend to be healthier. An optimal level is generally considered above 60 milligrams per deciliter, although there are some gender variations. Again, you want this to be done in a fasted state, which would be part of your fasted lipid panel. Regular physical activity, a nutritious diet rich in healthy fats like fish, olive oil and nuts and avoiding smoking can all help to increase your HDL levels. The third is we're going to take those first two metrics, the triglycerides and the HDL, and we're going to create a triglyceride to HDL ratio. This is calculated simply by taking your triglyceride level and dividing it by your HDL level. A lower number is ideal here with a target under two, but even better if it's closer to one. Why is this ratio so important? A high triglyceride to HDL ratio has been associated with a higher risk of heart disease and can indicate insulin resistance. If you know your triglycerides and HDL, keep an eye on this ratio as a marker of your cardiovascular health. Yet again, we want this calculated in a fasting state. So you want to make sure your lipid panel was done in a fasted state. Next up, fasting glucose. Fasting glucose measures your blood sugar level after an overnight fast and serves as a key metric for metabolic health. The goal is to keep this around 70 to 90 milligrams per deciliter. Elevated fasting glucose may indicate insulin resistance, prediabetes, or even type two diabetes. This metric is heavily influenced by diet, lifestyle, and existing metabolic conditions. 
If your levels are high, adopting a low glycemic diet and increasing physical activities are great first steps. Medications can assist in lowering blood sugar levels, but many cause worsening insulin resistance. None address the true underlying cause, which is diet, stress, lifestyle, and toxins. Next up, blood pressure. Blood pressure measures the force of blood pushing against your artery walls. Ideally, you want this to be below 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. High blood pressure is a major risk factor for heart disease and stroke. Key influences include diet, physical activity, stress, and even genetics. Contrary to popular belief, salt intake is most often not the driving factor. Although a diet high in sodium alone, such as high intake of ultra processed foods can increase the risk. Regular exercise and stress management techniques like meditation can all help to maintain healthy blood pressure levels. Adequate hydration, nutrient status, and nitric oxide can also make a positive difference in blood pressure. Medications, again, can be helpful to manage blood pressure, but again, they are not addressing the true underlying cause of the hypertension to begin with, which could be dehydration, nutrient deficiencies, stress, or even kidney dysfunctions. Next up, waist circumference. Waist circumference is a straightforward measure of belly fat and is another vital indicator of metabolic health. Increased waist circumference is a significant indicator of higher amounts of visceral fat, which is the unhealthy fat surrounding your abdominal organs. This type of fat often also accompanies another dangerous type of fat, ectopic fat, which is the kind of fat that's infiltrating your organs like your liver, pancreas, heart, and muscle. For men, the goal is for your waistline to measure less than 40 inches and for women less than 35 inches although some other countries and diabetes organizations would like those much more stringent with men being less than 35 and women being less than 31.5. Excess belly fat is associated with greater risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes, just to name a few. This metric is easy to track and can serve as a helpful reminder to stay active and choose nutrient-dense foods. Next up, fasting insulin. This one isn't really a basic measure in that most doctors unfortunately don't run it. Fasting insulin levels indicate how much insulin your body needs to maintain blood sugar levels after an overnight fast. An ideal insulin level is below eight with great levels between two and five. Elevated fasting insulin often points to insulin resistance, which is a precursor to type two diabetes. By controlling insulin levels through diet and lifestyle, we can support the body's natural balance and reduce overall diabetes risk. There are no medications that can help lower insulin levels. This purely comes through diet and lifestyle. Next up, HOMA IR score. The HOMA IR score estimates your level of insulin resistance through a calculation combining your fasting glucose and fasting insulin levels. Ideally, you want the score below two with lower levels being healthier. A high HOMA IR score signals increased risk of metabolic syndrome and type two diabetes. Monitoring this metric, especially if you're already at risk for diabetes is essential for early intervention and prevention. Next up, HSCRP or high sensitivity C reactive protein. High sensitivity C-reactive protein is a marker of inflammation in the body. An optimal level is below one milligram per liter. Chronic inflammation is linked to various health conditions, including heart disease, diabetes, cognitive decline, autoimmunity, and more. Inflammation can be managed through a quality diet, regular appropriate physical activity, adequate quality sleep, and stress management techniques. Next up, hemoglobin A1C. This measure estimates your average blood sugar levels over the past two to three months. Conventional medicine determines a normal A1C level is below 5.7, though functional health professionals will tell you to aim for less than 5.4%. High A1C indicates prolonged elevated blood sugars or frequent spikes in blood sugars, which can lead to complications like diabetes and heart disease. 
Monitoring A1C provides a broader view of your blood sugar health, helping you track long-term trends rather than just a single reading. Outside of elevated blood sugars and insulin, contributing to elevated hemoglobin A1C are factors such as iron deficiency anemia, inadequate hemoglobin levels, nutrient deficiencies, and other red blood cell imbalances. Next up, uric acid. Uric acid is a waste product found in the blood from the breakdown of fructose and purines. For optimal health, we want this to be below five for men and below four for women. High levels of uric acid can lead to conditions like gout and may also be linked to cardiovascular issues. Reducing fructose, alcohol, and purine intake can be helpful in reducing the production of uric acid. Fructose intake especially has dramatically increased over the past several decades, with high fructose corn syrup being the most popular sweetener in beverages and food products. Next up, liver enzymes. This includes AST, ALT, and GGT. Liver enzymes reflect the health of your liver, biliary system, and more. They're not just liver enzymes, although that's what we call them because that's where we're primarily evaluating. Normal levels can vary, but elevated enzyme levels suggest liver stress or damage, possibly due to alcohol consumption, viral hepatitis, fatty liver disease, certain medications, or other conditions. Maintaining a balanced diet and limiting alcohol are key steps to supporting liver health. Optimal ranges for AST and ALT are under 17, and for GGT, we want this between 10 and 24. Next up, vitamin D. Vitamin D is essential for bone health and immune function. Ideally, your levels should range between 40 and 60 nanograms per mil. Vitamin D levels are influenced by sun exposure, diet, certain medications. Deficiency is common, but spending time outdoors in the sunlight without sunscreen can really help, along with consuming fattier foods that contain fat-soluble vitamins. So things like fish, egg yolks, and animal fats can boost levels or help you to maintain higher levels. Vitamin D is critical for both physical and mental well-being, so it's an important one to keep an eye on. And you can get this with a simple blood test. I recommend, if you're going to supplement with vitamin D, that you make sure that it's a vitamin D three and also has vitamin K2 along with it. Magnesium is another vital component here to obtaining adequate vitamin D status. If you take too much vitamin D without having adequate magnesium stores, that vitamin D supplementation can actually drive magnesium even lower. So that wraps up our rundown of the essential health metrics. By understanding these values, you can take proactive steps towards better health and longevity. Remember, small, consistent changes in your diet, exercise, and lifestyle can have a profound impact on these numbers. If you'd like to get a new set of labs looking at these values, send me a message. I can assist with getting labs ordered or share details on how you can order them yourself. Thanks for tuning in to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. If you found this episode helpful, please share it with your friends and family who might benefit. Until next time, be well and vibrant.